<laughs> Somebody get that guy a tourniquet. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Shock Bites. Yep, that's right, we're back with another movie commentary on the channel today, and this movie I'm strangely a little bit excited for. For some bizarre reason, 44% of you wanted to see a movie commentary on the cult classic that is Sharknado. The film, which was released back in 2013, went straight to TV, but somehow, despite its terrible CGI and awful acting, had six sequels. I'll be honest, guys, I don't really know what you're going to learn in today's movie commentary from a shark science perspective, so you're just going to have to sit back and enjoy the ride. And with that said, it's time to grab your favourite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy this movie commentary of Sharknado with a real-life shark scientist. So we're starting off the film here on a pretty small fishing vessel that's doing a bit of shark fishing. Although it definitely looks like there's way too many sharks on there for the size of that boat. <laughs> We've got these two pretty shifty looking blokes bonding over a bowl of shark fin soup, as you do. A pod of 20,000 sharks is migrating. Hang on a minute. Did you just say a pod of sharks? <laughs> Yeah, so we don't really refer to sharks swimming in pods. The collective noun for sharks is a shiver, but we don't even tend to call them that even. Generally, we refer to a group of sharks as a school. So let's leave the pods to the dolphins, Mr. Shady Fisherman. So it's all kicked off pretty quickly here as the occupants of the boat have all been consumed by frenzied flying sharks. And the shady captain gets his just desserts as he is ripped apart by multiple sharks. It kind of looks like they're cutting his face as they fly past him, which based on the roughness of shark skin is oddly accurate. This is probably what would happen if a shark flew past you in the air at high speed. It would take the skin off your face. I can't actually believe I'm saying this is accurate. <laughs> okay, we're in Finn's bar here on the beach and hang on a minute. Isn't that the dad from Home Alone? <laughs> it totally is the dad. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you go from happy Christmas film to seedy bar local in a shark B movie. What a fall from grace. <laughs> the last the silver lining of the superstorm is that it has driven away the recent influx of sharks in our area. Ooh, wow, okay. We've got some real shark science to talk about here. So the news reporter just said that the hurricane that's on its way has sort of driven away all of the shark species in the area. And this actually does happen depending on the shark species. A paper was released earlier this year that showed different shark species have varied responses to major tropical storm events. Bull sharks, great hammerheads, and nurse sharks all tended to leave an area before the storm arrived, but tiger sharks didn't. In fact, the tiger shark numbers actually doubled just after the hurricane, which is probably because tiger sharks are scavenger hunters and they'd be picking off the dead marine life that had been killed by the hurricane. So while the news reporter might be right about some of the smaller sharks leaving the area, it looks like the bigger ones might be sticking around. Surfer girl here gets taken down by a bunch of different shark species, one of which kind of looks like a hammerhead, maybe. And Finn decides that he's going to try and warn the rest of the beachgoers about their impending doom. Although, how is no one hearing him shout here? Like, everyone is just so chill. They're just completely ignoring him. <laughs> Get out of the water, sharks! So despite the shocking CGI here, it is pretty much true that most shark bites do occur in shallow water. Okay, yeah, it's not like two feet of water, like some of these shots here, but it is somewhere between sort of five and 10 feet of water. And this is generally because this is where the shark's prey is spending most of its time. <laughs> Somebody get that guy a tourniquet. So this shark somehow manages to smash its way through that window and starts causing pure chaos in the bar but instead of reaching for an actual weapon and i'm pretty sure there's a shotgun behind the bar here by the way <laughs> bikini clad bar girl decides to go for a pull cue and expertly skewers it through the shark <laughs> the question here is could you stab through shark skin with a pull cue and the answer is obviously a resounding no <laughs> Shark skin is really thick. They actually have some of the thickest skin in the animal kingdom, and that's literally a blunt pull cue. I could have maybe believed it a bit more if she'd kind of snapped the cue in half first and then stabbed it, but no way is she doing this with a blunt cue. <laughs> so the flooding is starting to get significantly worse here, and we get the classic sharks swimming down the street shot there. <laughs> 
It's actually a question I get asked way more than I should. And that is, do sharks actually do this? Again, guys, it's a definite no from me. You've probably seen the photo that seems to go viral every time there's a hurricane or a flood of this shark seemingly swimming down the highway. And it's of course fake. Sharks don't want to spend their time swimming through dangerous areas during a big storm where there's no food for them to eat. They're much more likely to head off to deeper water or stay around the safe sandy banks just offshore. There's absolutely no ecological reason for them to swim down the damn highway. <laughs> Some more chaos here as this woman has somehow managed to lock her dog in the car. Like, how does that even happen? <laughs> anyway, heroic George comes to the rescue to smash the window with his trusty bar stool. Although despite spending nearly $2 million on the budget for this film, they've decided they would rather CGI a car window smash than actually smash a car window. <laughs> Come on guys, you spent $2 million on this. And after saving the car doggo, George ultimately meets his demise. Oh, oh crap indeed, George. Oh crap indeed. No real sharks aren't here, but I just wanted to make you sit through 15 seconds of some of the best acting I have ever seen. My girlfriend is not your responsibility. And unless it's the 20th of the month, which it currently is not, neither is Claudia. Khan, don't be rude. He's just worried about us. Every time it rains in LA, everyone swears it's the storm of the century. And even if it is, Beverly Hills emergency services are second to none. <laughs> this is what we're working with here, guys. You made me sit through an hour and a half of this. <laughs> are you kidding? Sharks in the swing pool is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> See you, champ. So throughout the film so far, we've had a lot of roaring sharks, which seemingly is a common feature in shark films for some reason. I just wanted to myth bust this one real quick for you. Sharks can't roar. In fact, generally they can't make any noise at all and that's because they don't have vocal cords. They literally have no organs capable of making sound. <laughs> so there's just a random shark fact thrown in for you. Can I use your phone please? It's been dead for hours. What is this dude still doing here? Like, why is he still working? They're in the middle of a literal shark tornado and this guy is still stood behind the counter. <laughs> My guy is probably on like $10 an hour and he's still holding down the fort because the terrorized citizens of downtown Los Angeles still need somewhere to buy their boozy drinks. Somebody give this guy a raise. <laughs> it's the government. Yeah, with a big capital G. They're behind everything. They know what we buy, they know what we eat. Ah, that's why he's still there. He's a nutter. I take back the raise thing. <laughs> two million. They spent two million dollars on this film. Instead of letting live sharks rain down on people, we're gonna get in that chopper and throw bombs into the tornadoes. Blasting those bastards to bits. So the master plan the team have come up with here to stop the tornado is to drop bombs in them. <laughs> Funnily enough, this actually was an idea from a certain former president of the United States on how to combat hurricanes. So that gives you an idea of what we're working with here. Six people went into the water and one little girl came out. The sharks took the rest. June the 29th, 1945. Anyway, at least we delivered the bum. I can't keep a straight face doing that. Okay, so it's probably got to the point in the film here where I should answer the question that's on everyone's minds, and that is, is a Sharknado actually possible? So in theory, yes, it is. Tornadoes are powerful enough to pick up some pretty heavy objects, including cows and cars. So what's to say they couldn't pick up a few sharks? But, and this is a big but, as I would hope most of you already know, sharks can only breathe underwater. When you remove them from the water, they will suffocate and die. So if a few sharks inadvertently got picked up by a raging tornado, they would die pretty quickly. So while you might get the odd shark that's randomly picked up by a tornado, there is no way that they would be flying around still alive in a frenzy trying to eat people. <laughs> I'm glad I could clear that up for you all. So it's at this point in the movie commentary, I wanted to create for you all a brief montage of some of my favorite sharks smashing through things clips from the film, which cumulatively was probably my favorite part about the entire film in its entirety. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.
some shark nato sharks here find themselves in a retirement home swimming pool and despite these animals being saltwater species somehow manage to not die we've got some oddly spliced in footage of a real reef shark there before our main protagonist finn decides he's gonna fill the pool with gasoline and blow them all to pieces <laughs> i mean those sharks weren't even attacking anyone and would have died anyway <laughs> what Always got to throw in a cool CGI explosion, I guess. Who is that up there? It's my son. You must be so proud. Yeah. Yep, yeah, my son is throwing bombs into a tornado full of sharks from a helicopter, and my overwhelming feeling is pride. What a great dad. <laughs> Bikini-clad bar girl falls out the helicopter and somehow manages to get swallowed whole by this flying shark. And this guy reacts exactly how I've been feeling for the entirety of this film so far. No! <laughs> Heading to the climax of the film here, I think, and Finn, in a desperate attempt to save his daughter from being splattered by this yeeted shark, decides he's going to launch himself headfirst into the mouth of it with a chainsaw. <laughs> Why am I watching this? All hope seems lost before we get this weird Rambo slash alien crossover as Finn manages to chainsaw his way out of the shark's stomach from the inside. <laughs> I've got to see that again. <laughs> it also just so happens to be the same shark that swallowed bikini-clad bar girl five minutes previously. <laughs> How fortunate. We then get this really gross shark guts kiss, which I can tell you straight up is going to smell like one of the worst things you have ever smelt in your life before our surviving cast looks out over a devastated Los Angeles. Hang on a minute. Why is it that the sharks are all dead now? They spent the whole movie thrashing around on land, but now they're all suddenly dead? What? <laughs> oh, I'm glad this is over. <laughs> and there we go, folks. That was Sharknado. Well, wow. Where do I start with that one? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's probably one of the worst films ever made in terms of the CGI cinematography and acting. But saying that, I actually laughed, like, a lot. <laughs> it's clearly a B-movie and is supposed to be exactly that. You definitely can't take it too seriously, otherwise you just switch off within about two minutes. The fact they went on to make six more of these films tells me there is a massive fan base for Sharknado. So... Fair play. Anyway, on to the scoring categories. For realism, I think I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. <laughs> Just kidding. I had you there for a second, didn't I? There was perhaps the odd thing they might have got right about sharks, but a film about sharks flying around in a tornado and eating people, I can't give it more than a 1 out of 10. And then for overall entertainment, it was pretty awful all round, but there were quite a few bits that I did laugh a lot at purely because of how bad it was. So because I was laughing... It's going to get a 4 out of 10 for me. Anyway, what did you think of Sharknado? Are you a big fan of the franchise? I want to hear all your thoughts about the film in the comments below. And remember, if you want to see a movie commentary on a specific shark film, make sure you let me know which one that is in the comments below, and I will make sure it is added to the list. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below, where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.